Hey guys, Michael Hyatt here coming to you at 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Why the different time today? Because I've been spending the entire day today with my mastermind group. So we've been in downtown Nashville meeting since uh, early this morning, and I had to move this uh, scope until now. But you're watching the Virtual Mentor Show. Thank you for the hearts. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, this is going to be just an open Q&A tonight. My, my name is, I can't even say it, my name is Michael Hyatt. I am the virtual mentor, and my goal is to give you the clarity, the confidence, and the tools you need to win at work and to succeed in life. And tonight, again, we're going to be talking about your questions, whatever they may be. I'm going to do my very best to answer your questions about personal development, productivity, leadership, and platform building. So, Regina, hey, how you doing? Good evening from New Jersey. Good evening to you. Somebody said, thanks for all that you do. Restored to serve. Thank you. Hi from Texas. Lincoln, California. Hi from Texas, says Ruth. Landon from Dallas. David from St. Louis. Hey, Priscilla Shire. Hi from Canada, Arkansas, Orlando, Faith Church. Hey, if you guys could put your name, you know, in the comments, that would be easier for me to read because it's a little bit tough on Periscope if you've Never done it before. Tiffany in Minneapolis, San Francisco, Houston, Jared, Derek from Ohio, somebody from British Columbia, one of my favorite places on the planet, Jennifer from North Carolina, Leanne in Tulsa. Awesome. Okay, so here's what I want to do tonight. Um, this can basically be about anything. I'll answer any legitimate question you have. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you, and believe me, there's plenty I don't know the answer to. But I want to answer your question. I want to tell you that on this side of the, the camera, the questions are scrolling by so quickly. I'm going to do my best to answer them, but if I miss it, repost it. And here's the rule. All you've got to do is put two question marks, give me your name in all caps, and then ask your question. So two question marks, your name in all caps, then ask me your question. And before you do anything, I want you to share this scope now by touching the little man that's right down here and scrolling up a little bit and hitting the share icon and sharing this with your friends. It's going to be a terrific session. I'm going to give you my very best and I'd love for you to share this and subscribe to my Periscope so you never miss another scope. Okay, let's go. Ashley said, do you have a morning routine? I absolutely have a morning routine. I wake up at five in the morning. I begin with Bible reading and prayer and journaling. And then I go straight from that to the gym. When I get home from the gym, usually go for about an hour. I work with a trainer three days a week. Get home from the gym. I read up on the news. Um, then I have some breakfast, get showered, and go to the office. So that's it. Um, Kim, what is more important, creativity or structure? Okay, Kim, that's a great question. Here's the answer. It's not either or. It's both and. The best artists are those that can work within the confines of boundaries. And without structure, there is no creativity. Creativity really explodes when people do it within the context of structure. Uh, Emily, what is your favorite thing to do to overcome fear? I'd, I'd say this. My favorite thing to do to overcome fear, oh my gosh, these questions are scrolling so fast, is just to step into it. Like I had a situation today in the mastermind, I'm not going to go into the specifics, but where I was a little bit afraid. You know what I did? I just stepped into it. Um, I felt fear, but courage is not the absence of fear. It's the willingness to do the right thing, even when you're scared, okay? And so all of you can be brave. All of you can be courageous, even if you feel fear. Rocky says, how can we help share outside of Periscope? That's a good question, and I'm not really sure how to do that myself. I know there's a way to grab the link, but I can't tell you off the top of my head. Khalil says, do you create vision boards? I don't, but I think it's a fantastic idea. I'll tell you what I uh, did this last year, though it was kind of fun. For my uh, 10 top goals for 2015, I had one of my daughters create a screensaver so that there was an image for every goal with the goal stated. And so when my screensaver goes on, those rotate on my screensaver. It's awesome. James says, how many chickens are in your pocket? Well, let me just look here. Oh, uh, none. Jay, should I start doing periscopes before my websites are done? You know, I would focus all my energy 
on getting your website because you want to have a place to point people. Like I can say to you, I blog at michaelhyatt.com, which I forgot to say at the top of uh, this particular broadcast. But uh, then I've got some place to send people. So it's great to engage. It's great to create this kind of relationship. But if I don't have somebody to, to some place to send you, then it really doesn't help me. And I think ultimately it doesn't help you. Ruth, seeing so many folks on Periscope talking about book publishing, best place to go. You're going to have to be a little more clear on that, Ruth, because I'm not sure what you're asking. Best place to go do what? Get published? Get advice on publishing? I don't know. Uh, somebody said, Michael Hyde in prime time is great. Scott said, is Periscope good for building a platform? Scott, I don't know yet. I'm just testing this myself, and this is kind of a 30-day test. I really, really like it. I like how it creates engagement. I like how it creates trust, but we'll see. So he said, how do I get more people to opt into my email list? One of the best ways to do it is have an email incentive. Something, go to my, my site at michaelhyatt.com. You'll see a good example because I have an ebook that I offer to people for subscribing to my email newsletter list. In fact, good segue. Right there it is. Uh, the address, let me just make sure you've got this thementor.tv slash shave10. And the book is called How to Shave 10 Hours Off Your Work Week. It's absolutely free. You can't buy it. You can only get it by subscribing to my email newsletter list. Did you see what I just did there? That's how you get people to subscribe to your email newsletter list. Last time I did that, uh, about three days ago on Periscope, I had 40 people subscribe just with a short mention like that. John says, what's more important, salary or title? Thank you, Michael. Well, I mean, I guess the easy answer is salary, because you can't spend your title when you go shopping at you know, Kroger or Publix or someplace like that. But on the other hand, there may be some strategic importance to your title that would be helpful. Um, content upgrades. This is from somebody whose name I can't read. Are highly effective? They are, absolutely. And I wish I had time to explain what that is. Viviana, do you recommend using your name as your brand or a company name? Well, here's the pros and the cons of that. Great question, Viviana. Um, number one is if you use your personal name, it creates more connection faster because people want to connect with people, not with institutions. On the other hand, the problem with connecting just with your name, like at michaelhyatt.com, is it's really hard to create a legacy with that because it's so tied to my personality. So what I've tried to do is actually use my name and leverage that to build other entities that I own like Platform University, like Five Days to Your Best Year Ever, like Get Published, like the Get Noticed theme. I own all those online properties. They were all started by me, but they're not connected to my name. Okay? Any other questions? Yeah, I love the heart love. Thank you guys for giving me so many hearts. Dave, what's your number one tip? Number one tip for what? Teddy in Franklin, Tennessee, do you have plans for a mastermind? Um, I don't have plans beyond the one that I have right now that meets in Nashville every quarter, but we are talking about some really exciting plans for expanding uh, our business of doing guided masterminds. Somebody said, uh, what lighting do you have? I have a ring light on the other side of me, and then I just have the overhead lights, but I just got two new side lamps that I'm going to install tomorrow so that it lights up this dark part of my face right here. We'll see how they work. Um, are you Republican? Um, yeah, most times, yeah, but I kind of lean a little bit libertarian, so I don't know what I am. I tend to, to vote for the person. Dave, what's your number one tip for businesses? That's a pretty broad question. Um, I would say build a platform. If you don't have a platform that helps you get noticed in a noisy world, then it's going to be really tough to get the attention that your message or your product or your service deserves. And I did write a book. I didn't mention this, but Platform Get Noticed in a Noisy World. It's a New York Times bestseller. Wall Street Journal bestseller, USA Today bestseller, and I walk you through the act, uh, actual process, step by step, on how to build a platform, and that's really kind of my expertise, okay? Other questions. It can be on anything. Uh, I really talk a lot about winning at work and succeeding at life, so it can be on life, it can be on work, or whatever. Is podcasting better than writing blog posts these days? I don't know that it's better, but it's definitely a media format that you should explore. It can be really powerful. I have both. My podcast is called This Is Your Life. You can find it in iTunes in the self-help section. It's usually in the top two or three um, podcasts there on, on iTunes, and it's been huge for me. 
Franklin says, how many coaching calls do you average weekly? About one. I don't do much coaching. Um, it doesn't really scale. You know, I, I've tried for the last 18 months to kind of change the way I do business. So instead of trading time for dollars, where I'm doing coaching or consulting or speaking, I try to do the work one time, like write a book, create a course, create a membership site, and then get paid over and over again. Uh, longtime podcaster, thanks for being so generous with your material. You're welcome. Thank you. David says, what are some ways to improve mental clarity and focus? I'll tell you, one of the, there's, there's two ways that are really easy, okay? And neither one's, one of these will cost you anything. Number one, sleep. If you're not getting seven, seven and a half, eight hours of sleep, you probably don't have the mental focus you need. So that's number one. Number two, exercise. Because when your blood is circulating, especially to your brain, you're going to have more mental acuity, more focus, and more clarity. Amy, how do you incorporate accountability into fulfilling goals? Well, one of the things I try to do is ask somebody that I love, who I know is for me, to hold me accountable to that goal. Oh, my wife's over there whistling at me. Yeah, she is in many ways my accountability partner. By the way, I just want to mention again, if you haven't downloaded this free book, Shave 10 Hours Off Your Work Week, do that tonight at TheMentor.tv vmentor slash shave 10. Sarah, what is the best business advice ever received? Best business advice I've ever received is this. Um, you're not as smart as you think you are, but you have more potential than you can possibly imagine. Laura, what is the difference between a goal and a habit? Example, exercising five days per week. Well, that would be a habit goal, okay? Both are legit, but uh, when you've got a habit, it's usually in the service of what I would call a terminal goal, one that has an end date to it, but both are important. Um, Ellie, do you have a PDF of Pro Tools to have before you launch a podcast? I don't. Not sure what you're asking, but I don't think I have that. Uh, Jen Befit says, let's see Gail. Do you guys want to see Gail? If you want to see Gail, show me some hearts. Come on. Come on. Let's, let's, uh, okay. She's going to sneak in here. There she is. Where you got to I? talk into my microphone. Is that all the hearts? I can know. <laughs> I'm kidding. So Gail and I have been married 37 okay. years okay. and she's the love of my life. I know there's not a lot of room for us to get in here because of this. Okay, so hi, Gail. Hello, gorgeous. Hi, Gail. Hi, Gail. Hi, Gail. Look, See how much you love? Look at all that. Okay, you're done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dave said, Tony Robbins, yay or nay? I love Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins is a friend. He's somebody that's been hugely helpful to me. However, I will say this. if um, He does use some language from time to time that Many people find offensive, so just be warned, uh, but I think the value is tremendous. I've learned so much from him, unbelievable. Viviana, should you post the same content on all your platforms? You've got to be careful about that because you've got to speak in the vernacular of the platform that you're posting on. For example, Facebook is very different from Twitter. Gary Vaynerchuk wrote a book on this called, what was it called? Jab, Jab, Jab? I can't remember what the name of it was, but he talks about jab, that. Jab, left, right. Sarah says, Gail, you're beautiful. Oh, jab, 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 right hook. Yeah. I had Gary on um, one of my podcasts, and he talks about that, and he's very, very smart when it comes to the kind of content that you need to post. Uh, Todd says, do you build a platform where you are or where you want to be? Well, you kind of got to start where you are, but you ought to have a clear picture of where you're trying to go. Dr. Max says, what platform software do you recommend to use for your first online course? Well, I, I use a couple different ones. Um, I've got my Get Published courses on Kajabi, K-A-J-A-B-I dot com. Uh, my Platform University membership site is on Wishlist Member, but there's lots of options out there today. So uh, you might go to Social Triggers and look at Derek Halpern's new software, and I can't remember what the name of it is. Some of you, some of you may remember it. Marissa, my daughter says, what did you say? Marissa's here too. I saw the post go by. <laughs> so somebody said, I haven't done a scope yet. Do you see a list of all questions you've been uh, posted? Yeah, you can see it in the replay. And if you're, how many of you are periscoping? If you're scoping, give me a yes. I just want to see how many of you that are listening to me right now are either have either started a periscope um, session 
or are thinking about doing it. Okay, yes, 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 starting to, yes, but not regularly yet. Yes, 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 yay, 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 yes, yes, yes. Okay, so what was the question about Periscope, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I totally lost it. <laughs> um, I don't remember what it was. That's what's happened. What's your view on Donald Trump? You know, I think Donald's getting enough press without me giving him more. <laughs> uh, Zippy Courses. Yes, that's Derek's. Clay says, how can I persuade someone else? Oh, I lost it. Went by so fast. Donna, did a trial during a high school reunion. Okay. Um, Idolize said, part of Platform University, and I missed that. Part of Platform University, but have not started a blog yet. Will it help me start? Yes. This is the easiest thing to do, and I think still, today, blogging is not dead. If people are telling you blogging's dead, they don't have a clue what they're talking about. It is not dead. Now, blogs that are boring are going to be still boring. They're going to be dead from the get-go. But if you've got something compelling to say, you can still build an audience around a blog, and I've got an entire tutorial on how to do that at my site at michaelhyatt.com. Kara says, just joined Platform University last night, and I'm hooked. Awesome, Kara. Glad to have you. Will, do you see opportunities for scopes sponsored by companies? To be honest, I've never had that thought till right now. <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed to admit that. But yeah, I'm sure that's going to happen. I never would have thought that would have happened with podcasts. But now so many podcasts, it's not true for mine, but so many podcasts are, are posted, are posted, are sponsored. Uh, but mine's not because I basically advertise one product per um, podcast. So I'm collecting info for my book. How much should I be out there before the book comes out? How much should I put out there, I think is what you're saying before. You can put a lot out there. I don't think it hurts your ultimate audience for your book to blog portions or even all of your book because people will be pay for the convenience of how it's all arranged. Uh, my book platform, almost the entire content of that blog or of that book was blogged before it became a book and it still went on to become a New York Times bestseller. Corin, what's a mistake you've made in the past with your business? I'll tell you a big mistake I made, and this happened to me in the 90s with a business that I owned. I let my investment get ahead of the return on the investment, and the business went, I would say bankrupt, but we didn't have enough assets to be able to pay off our creditors, so it didn't even go bankrupt, but it, it failed. It was a failed business, and it's because I let my investment uh, get ahead of the return on that investment. What's your best advice for a young and coming leader? It's this, stay hungry and learn. Read. You probably heard this before. It's not original with me. Leaders are readers. Readers are leaders. If you want to lead, if you want to be a successful entrepreneur or a successful business person, you got to read. Somebody said, new to blogging advice, difference between essays and blogging. Forget essays. Nobody reads essays. Nobody cares about essays. You know, that's boring. You know, what you need is a conversational blog post that sounds like how you would talk to somebody. Should I alphabetize my sock drawer by color or textile <laughs> type? I really recommend starting with textile type so that you've got all the linens in one part, all the cottons, and then all the wools, and then by color within that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Franklin, what day was your greatest business day ever, plus, and why? I think it was the day that I became the CEO of Thomas Nelson Publishers. It was August the 18th, 2005. I remember that because it was my second daughter Mindy's birthday. And um, we were a New York Times publicly held company. And I was just, I felt proud that day. I had my whole family there. Um, and, and that was just the, the realization of a dream. And it still makes me happy to think about it. Uh, somebody else says, Hank, helping my 12-year-old son start a coffee roasting business. Have any suggestions for the U.S.? Get him on the web. You've got to have a website. You're not going to go anywhere without a website. If you don't have a website, you don't exist. Tim, how do you find the next book you want to read, especially related to growth and leadership? You know, I just listen. You know, I hang around with growth-oriented people, which, by the way, is a real secret for success. You know that, right? So I hang around people that talk personal development, that talk leadership, um, and listen to what they're reading and ask the kind of question you just ask when you're with them. That's a, that's a huge help. When I'm with the people that I um, hang with, we're always talking books. Aaron, how can entrepreneurial moms keep family first? Well, I would say first by starting with just that intention, that you want to keep family first. 
Then I think you have to create boundaries around your business so that it doesn't bleed into your home. So for me, for example, I don't let work bleed into my weekends. So I work Friday. I can even work till Monday night. But my own rule is that once it comes uh, Monday night, and I rarely work on Friday nights, but, but I can if I want to. But it goes till Monday night, and then all day Saturday, all day Sunday, Not no work. Night. Not Monday night. The, did I say Monday night? Yeah. No, I meant Friday night. So I'm going to have all day Saturday and all day Sunday completely clear. So, yes, yeah, somebody said hard stop. That's exactly right. Dave says best way to find a real mastermind group. I'm going to tell you this secret. If you want a real mastermind group, here's how to get one. You ready to write this down? Start one. That's the best way to do it. Start one. Look for people that are like-minded, that have the same aspiration, and make sure you put some rules around it regarding participation, regarding how frequently you're going to meet, and make sure that you don't get people in there that are just you know, super needy, super broken, and are going to bring down the group. You can help them in another context, but not a mastermind. Why did I ditch my electric car? Um, I'm not sure who said that. Marissa, did you say that? Okay. Um, I just, I don't know, it was, kind of, it was awesome. Uh, but I just kind of got tired of it. So, it's small. And it was too small. Yeah. Gail's piping in from over here. Does Dan Miller still have a mastermind course available? Yes, he does. I just found it online the other day. That would be what I would recommend. If you're thinking about starting the mastermind, and if you are, give me some hearts. If you're thinking about starting the mastermind, one of the best things you could possibly do, uh, find Dan Miller's course online. Viviana says, is it really possible to set boundaries when you're starting your business? Yes, but I think you also have to recognize the reality of seasons. There are seasons in life when you sometimes have to go out of balance in order to achieve a goal, but you can't let something temporary become a, a permanent, and if you're not careful, it's really easy to deceive yourself on this. And so I know there have been times, like when I became the CEO of Thomas Nelson, it was all hands on deck, and I remember sitting down with Gail and saying, look, um, I'm going to have to be out of, a, uh, out of balance for a few months as I get acclimated to this job. And she said, okay, what does that look like? And we talked very specifically about what that looked like. Okay? So seasons, you've got to consider that. But don't let it be a cop-out for you. Clay says, this is good stuff. Thanks. Well, thank you. Have you ever ridden a Segway? Yes, I have. I loved it. I keep thinking maybe I should get one of those. Marissa says, is being a young entrepreneur different than being at your age? You know, I want to talk about this age thing, Marissa. And by the way, this is from my daughter, Marissa, who is sitting right over there on the couch. Um, but since she asked a question formally, I'm going to go ahead and ask it here, or say a few words about age. You know, sometimes I meet people that might be in their 50s or their 60s, and they say, you know, my age is really a problem. I'm too old to start a business. I'm too old to write a book. I'm too old to get a promotion. I'm too old to get another job. And sometimes I meet young people, and they say just the opposite. I don't have any experience. Who would hire me? I don't have any experience. I think your age is a problem if it's a problem for you. Do you know what I'm saying? In other words, you could completely reframe that. You, let's say you're a young entrepreneur, and you, you'd say, I will never have more energy than I have right now. I'll never be open, more open to new ideas than I am right now. So how you frame things to yourself is critically important if you're old and you're looking for a job, you could say, you know what, i got a lot of experience, a lot of wisdom that I could bring to bear and be a tremendous asset to any business or any institution. But if you don't frame it in your own mind, and if you're not convinced in your own mind, you're not going to convince anybody else. So sell yourself first. Yes, Ron says perspective is everything. Greg, best strategy to handle office politics, refuse to play. That's what I would do refuse to play. And it's easy to get sucked into it, but I would call it out when you see it. I, there have been times when I've been, you know, before I was the CEO of Thomas Nelson, I was just a regular person in the company. And there were conversations I had to walk away from. I didn't try to make it a big deal or, you know, uh, uh, grandstand about it. But I would just quietly walk off and excuse myself. I didn't want to find myself in those political conversations. Somebody said, will you ever retire? No. The day I die will be the day I retire. And even then, it's just a different assignment. I don't believe in retirement. I think if you want to die early, retire. Do you find that broadcasting is adding to your confidence, says Sarah? I do. Um, and I think in a really healthy way. You know, one of the great 
capabilities or one of the great benefits of uh, scoping is that it does build confidence. You know, and I realize that if I stumble over words or I miss questions or I mispronounce names, it's okay. Nobody dies. Nobody gets hurt. It's okay. Tony says, when did you know you could make the transition from employee to entrepreneur? Ooh, great question. I, was, I did both of them in parallel for a while. So I started blogging in 2004. I started accepting advertising on my blog in 2006. I started getting an income stream. And it became pretty apparent by about 2010 that I was about to hit a fork in the road. And it wasn't fair to my business to continue to blog and make money on the blog. And it wasn't fair to my blog and what I wanted to do there to keep working in my business. So I had to choose. But what an awesome thing to be able to have that choice. So if you're thinking about starting a business, I would start it as a side gig, let it get a little altitude, be successful, and then jump once you see some momentum. Uh, any multilingual periscopes that you know of? I don't. Um, oh, those went fast. I'm 46. I felt like I missed my boat. What would you say to older people in dreams? 46? Are you kidding me? I wished I was 46. I'm 60 years old. I feel like I'm 35. I've never had more energy. Do you know how many people have started their business after 60? I mean, Colonel Sanders just got started. Laura Ingalls Wilder hadn't even uh, written the, uh, what are the books called, girls? Little House. Little House on the Prairie. I mean, so much happens, you know, after you get a little wisdom. And, and so Megan and I were consulting with a guy, this was probably six months ago now, he walked into the consulting assignment. He wanted some advice from us on building his platform. This guy was like 52 years old. And he told us that. Like he led with that. Like, what do I care how old you are? I care how much energy you have. I care what you bring to the table. I care about the difference you want to make in the world. I don't really care about your age. I don't care if you're 18 or 52. But he told us he was 52. And then he said this. He said, I think I've peaked. Are you kidding me? You think you've peaked at 52? No way. You're just getting started. You know, I've got a 25-year plan for my life. I'm just getting started. And I'll tell you what, when I get to 85, I'll still have a 25-year plan. Now, how long am I going to last on the earth? I don't know, but I'm giving it all I can for as long as I've got. Laura, do you see doctors regularly? I do. You know, I have an annual physical. I've got a nutritionist I work with. Yeah, I, I really believe that my body is a gift that God's given to me, and I have a stewardship and a responsibility to take care of it. Uh, Dr. Max says, I have a, oh, it disappeared. Sorry. Jenny, is Michelle returning to the podcast? Loved her input and questions. Yes, she's going to be here week after next to record season six of This Is Your Life podcast. For those of you that uh, don't know, Michelle Kashat has been my co-host for, I think she did the first four seasons. And, um, then she had a bout with cancer, and it was brutal, but she's uh, emerged from that victorious, and she's getting her energy back day by day, and I'm so thrilled that she's going to join me in the studio. Now, my buddy Stu McLaren, how many of you know Stu? I mean, he's amazing. Stu has been sitting in for Michelle, and he did it for two seasons, and he's done a phenomenal job, and I'll be forever grateful to him for the job he did, and I hope you've enjoy getting a chance to, to know him. Maybe we'll get all three of us in the studio. But I, I love Michelle. I can't wait till she's uh, back. Aaron says, as a new entrepreneur, where do you put the most energy? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think it's probably all about in trying to get some momentum going. You know, whatever that is and however that looks like in your business. You know, if you're going to be a blogger, it's probably in traffic. Or if you're going to write a book, it's probably getting that first book sold. Because once you start getting a little momentum, it's like getting a big flywheel turning. You know, Jim Collins talks about that in Good to Great. Once you get some momentum, it's a lot easier to keep it going, but initially it's tough. So get the momentum. Yeah, Stu McLaren is his name, and you can find him at stu.me. Mel, what's your advice for hiring VAs? Totally for it. One of the most important things you can do as an entrepreneur, if you're going to leverage and scale your time, if you're going to be able to focus on what you love and what you do best and what your unique contribution is, you've got to have help. The great thing about the time that we live in, you can buy it in as little as five-hour increments. So you could hire a VA for five hours a week to do the stuff that you hate or that uh, you're just not very good at. 
And what would that make possible in your business? If you could offload the stuff you hate or aren't good at so that you could focus on the stuff where you really add value. And some people are penny wise and pound foolish about this. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they, they wouldn't think, maybe they make $100 an hour. They wouldn't think about paying a VA $100 an hour because that's too much money, but they'll pay themselves to do VA tasks because they won't, they're too cheap to hire somebody to help them. Pat, creating an e-course, should I build social media first? I do them both at the same time. You know, build the course, build your platform. Same thing with the book. Write the book, build your platform. Lisa, I want to be an entrepreneur but don't know what I want to do. How do I discover that? I think you have to try a lot of different things. You know, don't be afraid to start and to stop. You know, it takes most of us several shots, uh, several attempts before we get it right. Somebody asked if I'm an NFL fan. I hate to disappoint you, but no. <laughs> <laughs> the girls are laughing over here. Yeah, let me tell you how many football games I watched this last year. In the last 12 months, I've watched, let me just think here for a second. Oh yeah, half of one. I watched half the Super Bowl. That was it. Not particularly proud about it, but that's just the way it is. Um, what else? Somebody said that's a great laugh. Thank you. No, that was my Dr. Mack says, I'm 60 and starting my first e-business. Super excited. I have more to share than ever. Dr. Mack, you're exactly right. You have more to share than ever. You've got wisdom. Uh, you've got so much to offer the world. And when I talk to young people, they say, well, if I was old like you, I could succeed. I talk to old people, they say, well, if I was young like you, I could succeed. Which is it? It's whatever you make your mind up to be. And I want to finish this with this thought. Not original to me, but you probably heard it said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. Tomorrow, let me tell you what we're going to do. Uh, because I've got some all-day meetings tomorrow, by the way, I'm going to be going through Don Miller's Story Brand Seminar with my mastermind group. I've been through it. I've taken my entire team through it. And so now I'm taking my mastermind group through it tomorrow. So I'm not going to be done till uh, middle of the day. So we're going to do the Periscope session tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And we're going to be talking about my podcast episode tomorrow. So don't miss it on iTunes. Guys, thanks so much for showing up. Love you. Hope you have a great day. Whatever the day is left, it's a blank canvas. Make it a great day. Paint something beautiful. Bye-bye.